We're hitting part of the hospital that you haven't seen before. Today, we're in the Burns Aftercare Clinic. On Operation Ouch, we've seen our fair share of burns, scrapes, cuts, and all sorts of gory bits. But what happens afterwards? All those injuries start to heal, and often, they form scars on your skin. Look at this. Last week, I accidentally burnt my arm on the cooker. Now, your body's really good at repairing itself, and this has already started to heal. But if it had been a more serious burn, that could leave a scar, and that would require careful treatment. When you injure yourself, the body heals the wound with scar tissue. This looks and feels quite different to normal skin. It's not as strong or flexible, and the bigger and deeper the injury, the bigger the scar. I'm on duty with scar and burn specialist Kevin Ryan to check up on some of the patients he's treating. First in is Holly, who took a bit of a tumble five months ago. If you're squeamish, get ready to look away. So, Holly, what happened? Why are you here? There was a tree stump on a hill and I fell over it. So can I see what happened? That's one month later and the skin's already starting to heal but there's a lot of this pus and infection there. And then this is now five months later and you can see it's all healed and there's a bit of scar but that's going to keep getting better and better, isn't it? Holly is being fitted with a special stocking that will help the scar continue to improve. Because Holly's wound took a long time to heal, the scar is more severe, if you like. Yes. And so by, by making a little stocking that presses on that, it'll get a flatter, nicer result. Is yeah, that right? That's what we're hoping for. Next in is Jensen, having a checkup on a burn he got over four weeks ago. Jensen, can you tell us the story of how this happened? The pie dropped on my leg. You dropped a pie on your leg? <laughs> what type of pie was it? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion pie. What would have concerned us would it be had he had any raised lumpy scarring that would have contracted and pulled in, but it isn't. That's beautifully soft, nice and soft and supple, so that shouldn't cause him any problems at all. In terms of the pinkness, that would be there for several weeks, if not several months, but it will fade eventually. So if I press on it, yeah. I can make the pinkness go away yes. and then that, that's the blood flowing back. Exactly. But those blood vessels aren't quite normal, are they? That's no, part of the healing that's process. That's right, it is. They're very fragile at the moment, they are. But they do, they do improve, it just takes time, just takes several months for that to resolve. Ben had an accident five months ago. Stand by, because this isn't for the faint-hearted. And unfortunately, his burn injury got infected. To help it heal fully, the doctors took a patch of skin from his thigh to cover the injured part of his foot. This is called a skin graft. So what happened? Why are you in Burns Clinic today? I was making mum and dad a coffee. I had um, a music player with me that I carried downstairs and put on the side while I was waiting for the kettle to boil. And because I had no pockets, I, I just thought of a quick way to, to carry it upstairs and I just put it under my chin. How were you holding it all? I was holding it like that. And then what happened? So I was like looking down and I just waited to lift my head up to see where I was going. So you dropped the music player and spilled hot coffee all over your foot? Yeah. Oh dear. But for Ben, the question now is whether he can go swimming again. Should we have Let's a look at that? Yeah. And we'll give you your answer. Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. Oh. That's beautifully soft. I can't feel any signs of thickening there. That's just what we want. Um, it's now fully healed. I thought this was going to look much more serious. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. such a good result. In terms of swimming, I think yes, no problem. Yeah. Brilliant. That's brilliant news, brilliant news. Although the scars may not ever go away fully, thanks to these treatments, it means that life can get back to normal for these three. Swimming for Ben, gymnastics for Holly, and cold pies only for Jensen. Time to head back to Accident and Emergency to catch up with Jack and his sausage finger. Oh, I love sausages. Do you think he's got any ketchup? Let's see him get fixed. In Manchester, nine-year-old Jack is back in hospital waiting for an operation, and he's brought along a new friend. Now I don't have a sausage finger, I have Cyril. Hello, Cyril. Cyril is protecting Jack's cut finger, and this is how it was damaged. It was Jack's birthday, and he'd been given some money to buy a gift at the toy shop. When they arrived, Jack got out of the car, and in the excitement, he closed the car door on his finger. Ouch! Jack's operation is just moments away, so Cyril's days are numbered. Tell him, Dad. You're going to lose Cyril, aren't you? Never mind, Jack. Jack's on his way to have his operation. And there's no sign of nerves from our patient. In fact, he's cracking jokes. Not, not. 
Who's there? Donna Poo. Donna Poo. Get it? I think Cyril enjoyed that one too. Time to prepare Jack for theatre. To make sure he doesn't feel any of the procedure, the doctor gives him some anaesthetic. Dr. Anne Markey and Dr. Adiyinka Malajo are performing Jack's surgery. First, they thoroughly clean Jack's hand. The next step is to remove the nail so they can stitch up the finger. And remember, Jack can't feel a thing. Before he can start to stitch, Dr. Adiyinka takes out any little bits of dirt and broken nail stuck in the wound. Next, he stitches the cut before gluing back on the nail. And there's just enough time for a quick trim. With the nail in place, a protective gauze is put around the tip of Jack's finger to stop the bandage sticking to the wound. Time to wrap that sausage finger back up. Good. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. How's the op, Doc? That went really well. He's got another sausage finger for a couple of weeks till that gets better. On the recovery ward, Jack's wide awake. So, how was your snooze? They had like this dream when I, when I was in an action figure movie. An action figure movie? Cool. But are you missing Cyril? Since Cyril's gone, I have a new sausage finger. He's forgotten Cyril already. I know. And it looks like he's about to take that sausage finger home. Bye, Jack. Bye. <laughs> Ready to see some amazing stuff? Yes! We're going to show you where you began. Just don't try anything you see here at home. In this lab, you'll see a very special human organ, but it's not for the squeamish. Today, we're looking at how babies grow. Right, here you go, Chris. You can get a nice close look at my belly button with that. Whoa, I think I've missed something. Why on earth would I or anyone want to look at your belly button? Well, I thought we were looking at how babies grow. Yes, but what's that got to do with your... Ah, hold on. I see where you're going with this. Exactly. Because did you know that your belly button used to be your mouth and your bum? <laughs> OK, yes, that's true. But we still don't need to look at your belly buttons, on because I've got something much more impressive. Take a look at this. Whoa! That is much more impressive than my belly button because this is a real human placenta and umbilical cord. These amazing organs are what keep a baby alive and able to grow inside its mum. The placenta's job is to absorb oxygen and vital nutrients from the mum's blood and deliver them to the baby via the umbilical cord. As well as this, the umbilical cord also carries waste products, that's wee poo and carbon dioxide, away from the baby, down the umbilical cord and through the placenta into mum's body for her to get rid of. Now, once you're born, you don't need these anymore, which is why we have these to show you. They've been kindly donated to us by a mum who's given birth to her baby, and she's happy for us to show them to you, which is pretty special. This placenta is absolutely amazing. But, you know, I've always said that there's really only one thing better than a real human placenta, and that is a double human placenta from twins. Wow! This must have been what our placenta looked like when we were inside our mum. Absolutely. This has also kindly been donated by the mum of twins. So what you can see here is two placentas and two umbilical cords. After you're born, the cord gets snipped off, leaving you with your belly button. But until then, this cord is your lifeline. But what does a baby look like when it's actually inside its mum? We're going to show you. Now, what we've got here is a real live baby. Zon, this isn't a baby, this is Amelia, and she's a grown-up. That's true. Thanks very much for coming into the lab, Amelia. Thanks, but Amelia. But actually, inside Amelia is a real live baby. Oh. And ordinarily, of course, we couldn't show you that baby, but we have this ultrasound scanner. So, Amelia, are you having a boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. Amelia, how many weeks pregnant are you? 29 weeks. At this stage, a baby's organs are developed. Just here, what you can see beating is Amelia's baby's heart. Wow, amazing! The white things here are his bones, so that's his backbone. Very clearly, you can see that there. Surrounding the baby, these big black patches are liquid. And that's because the baby's sitting in a thing called the amniotic sac. So it's sitting in a big sac full of fluid. That protects it from bumps and from infections. At the moment, his eyes have started to work, his heart and all his organs are working normally. The one massive difference between being inside Amelia and being out in the world is that this little boy is breathing 
entirely through his umbilical cord, through his belly button. But what we really want to know is what does he look like? So we've been able to do a 4D scan. 4D scans provide an incredible lifelike image of the baby inside the womb. You can see his eyes, his nose and his little mouth. Amelia, what do you think? It's amazing. He looks like his dad, but with my nose. <sighs> And there's another really nice thing here. He has found another use for his placenta, because as well as giving him all his oxygen and nutrients, he's also been using it as a pillow. So I think you've got a very resourceful young man in there. Amelia, thank you so much for letting us meet him. Thanks very much. No problem. We've shown you the incredible organs that keep you alive and enable you to grow before you're born inside your mum. The placenta and the umbilical cord bring nutrients and oxygen and take away waste, everything a baby needs. So the next time you're looking at your belly button, remember, it used to be your mouth and your bum. And personally, I think it makes a rather good nose. <laughs> Since Amelia visited us, she's had a baby boy called Antonio John. Oh, cute. Congratulations. Ouch. Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. And some of their work is life-changing. Today, I'm meeting 10-year-old Ben, who has epilepsy. Your brain is incredible. It tells your body what to do by sending electrical messages through your nerves to your muscles. Whether you're walking, blinking or picking your nose, it's these messages from the brain that control movement. But sometimes too many uncontrolled messages come from the brain to the body, creating a storm of electrical activity. And when this happens, it's called an epileptic seizure. Epilepsy is a condition that affects 60,000 children in the UK, so you might have it, or you might have a friend who does. Ben has been having seizures for nearly five months. Morning. As well as medicine, in a small number of cases, doctors can use surgery to treat epilepsy. And that's why Ben has come to Bristol Children's Hospital. So you have these seizures, now how often do you have them? Uh, two times a day sometimes. And what happens when you have a seizure, do you know? I don't know. Not sure? And why don't you know? Because you're not conscious when you have them, are you? Yeah. You don't remember them at all? No. So today is a really big day for you. Yeah. Why is it a big day? Because I'm operation. You're going to have an operation today? Yeah. Ben's incredible surgery involves removing a small part of the brain which doctors believe is causing his seizures. Ben has had MRI scans and electrodes fitted to his head to pinpoint the exact area to remove. Dr Mike Carter is carrying out today's operation. We learned that there are electrical activities coming from one particular part of the brain, and that area of the brain is the area that contains the abnormality we can see on the scan. So he's going to have an operation to remove this abnormality and hopefully cure his seizures. It's time for Ben's operation. He's had a general anaesthetic to put him to sleep so he won't feel a thing. So this black bit here, in this bit of Ben's brain, this is where those seizures are starting. And this is what Mike is going to take out today. Firstly, Ben gets a snazzy haircut in the place where the incision will be made. Then Dr Mike cuts through Ben's skin and muscle to expose the skull. Look away now if you're squeamish. So this is the bone. We're going to mark out where we're going to make some openings into it. What Mike's doing is opening a hatch. He calls it actually a trap door in the side of Ben's skull. And underneath, we're going to get to the brain. There you go. It's a bit of bone that's come out. OK, so we'll keep that, put it back in later. Another gross alert coming up. So this is the surface of Ben's brain. And about two centimetres under here is that abnormality of the blood vessels that Mike is going to remove. To make sure Dr Mike gets to exactly the right part, he uses an amazing piece of technology called neuro-navigation, which guides him to precisely where the lesion is. Dr Mike begins to cut into Ben's brain. I'm just beginning to see a difference in the colour of the tissue down here. I think that's the abnormality. That's certainly where the image guidance is telling us we need to be. So the, the red, angry-looking blob is the abnormality where we think the epilepsy is coming from. But, um... There you go. Have a look at it. Wow. So this is the lesion that Mike thinks has been causing Ben's epilepsy. And he's really hoping that now that he's taken that out, the seizures will stop. Ouch. Today, we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. 
If you're anxious about an ailment or curious about a condition, then the Elchmobile is the place for you. That's brilliant, look at that. Zand is preparing the clinic, ready for his patients. And later, he'll be out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, he's open for business. Can I have the next patient? First in is 11-year-old Jay, with a question about a fascinating feature on his feet. So, Jay, what's brought you to the Alchmobile today? I've got a very annoying thing on my feet. Both of my big toes are bent. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of I've got a very annoying problem with my feet and both my big toes are bent-itis. That's exactly what I'd say. Wow, you have really bendy big toes. So what Jay's got is actually very unusual. This joint is where your toes are bending in. It's that last joint in your big toe. These are called pallux interphalangeus. <laughs> That's Latin for bendy toes. So what should I do about it? It's well worth seeing a specialist in feet, so a podiatrist or an orthopaedic surgeon. They can put special gadgets in your shoes, things that'll either pull your toes straight or push them a little bit and get them right. Now, it may be that when you're older, you actually need an operation to fix it, but it isn't going to cause you problems through your whole life, but it's well worth looking into when you're young. It's a busy day for Zand. He's leaving the clinic to go out and about in the park to solve your medical mysteries. Dr Sam, why do you get wobbly legs after a scary ride? What happens is your body's releasing a hormone called adrenaline, which is meant to prepare your body to like run away from something frightening. So it makes your heart beat faster, it makes your muscles more twitchy. And then your muscles are all ready to go, but you're not running around, you're just standing there. So they're kind of twitching and wobbling and trembling. And that's, that's where that feeling comes from. Why, when you're on a really fast roller coaster, did your face go like this? Nice face, Joe. When you're on the ride, you know how you feel heavy, like your head feels very... It's hard to move your head, it's hard to lift your arms. You're effectively getting what's called G-force pulling on your face. As you're going around a corner accelerating, you've got lots of times the force of gravity pulling on you. What that means is it pulls the skin on your face, the muscles in your face back, so it starts to do that, change the shape of your face. Back at the Alchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's eight-year-old Anissa with a story about her skin. I got some different colour patches of skin on some parts of my body. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got different coloured patches of skin on different parts of my body-itis. Sounds right to me. What we're looking at is completely normal skin that's just lost its colour. And what I think you've got is a problem called vitiligo. Vitiligo means that the cells that normally make skin dark using a chemical called melanin just aren't working anymore. They've either died or they're just not making that chemical anymore, and so those bits of skin are lighter. We don't really know all the reasons why it happens, but the good news is it's not dangerous, it's not going to do you any harm, it's just a bit noticeable around your eyes. What could I do about it? A lot of people respond to either light therapy on the patches or to laser therapy. It may well be that your doctors can help you treat it. Thank you for having me. Anissa, thank you very much for coming in today. Job done. Clinic closed.